So hi! How about exploring some cool and unusual artifacts from the past? Let's go! Have you ever heard of Chinese magic mirrors? These mirrors were made of solid bronze. They had two sides. The front was a shiny polished surface, similar to our typical mirrors. It was the back that did the magic. When bright light fell on the mirror, it looked as if it was transparent, and the pattern on the back of the mirror got projected onto the wall. The backside could have different designs on it, depending on what its creator wanted to depict. Since the mirror was made out of bronze, no one expected this optical illusion to occur. These ancient artifacts date back to 2900 to 2000 BCE. They became popular in China and were produced in large numbers at the time. Eventually, their fame faded away. For centuries, the magic of these mirrors baffled both people and scientists. In the 11th century, Chinese scientist Shen Ku decided to study the mirrors. He conveniently had three of them. He was surprised by the ability of the metal to act as if it were transparent. He believed that some tempering techniques created surface wrinkles on the mirror to make it translucent. Yet these wrinkles were imperceptible to the human eye. It turns out he was right. Many scientists tried to decipher the open mirrors over the centuries, but remained clueless. Finally, in 1932, William Bragg discovered that Shen Q had been right about imperceptible surface wrinkles all along. Every once in a while, people open multiple tabs in a browser and come to a point where there's no room for a new tab. Apparently, this had also been happening long before computers and the internet were invented. Meet the 16th century browser. This is a full-size book wheel. It's kind of a custom-made rotating bookshelf. Gregory Hayworth, a specialist in textual science, says that this tool has a system of epicyclic gears. That means that the book wheel has a working principle like a planetary system. One gear rotates around another. The shelves of the device maintain a constant 45-degree incline that holds the book securely as the giant wheel turns. Back then, people used the tool while writing encyclopedias and editions of classical works. In this kind of work, a person has to have many books open simultaneously so that the information from multiple sources can be gathered easily. Italian engineer Agostino Ramelli is the inventor of this piece of early modern machinery. What if I tell you that sponge divers in Greece accidentally found an ancient computer? They pulled out this artifact from a shipwreck near Antikythera Island in 1901. Scientists called it the Antikythera Mechanism and labeled it as the first mechanical computer. The machine looks like a hunk of bronze, but it has some kind of mechanism composed of gears and wheels. So, experts first assumed that it was an astronomer's tool. After an X-ray scan, though, they found out that the instrument was far more complex than they thought. The artifact was meant to calculate astronomical positions, track the four-year cycle of athletic games, and so on. It contained a box with dials on the outside and had an assembly of gear wheels attached. It's still unknown who built an instrument with this level of artistry 2,000 years ago and why this technology was lost. After seeing how sophisticated the device was, scientists accepted that their perception of ancient Greek engineering wasn't really accurate. Professor Michael Edmonds of Cardiff University admits that based on the knowledge they have, this mechanism shouldn't even exist. Edmonds says the machine is one of a kind and its astronomical calculations are precise. For him, the Antikythera mechanism is more valuable than the Mona Lisa. In 1929, scholars working in Topkapi Palace Museum in Turkey discovered a map. It became famous for being the oldest map showing the Americas. Perry Reese drew this detailed map on a gazelle skin in 1513. He depicted Europe, North Africa, the coast of Brazil, and several islands, such as the Azores and Canary Islands. The most exciting thing is that he created the map only 21 years after Columbus had set foot in the New World. Well, it was new to him. 
Perry Rees was a maritime scholar and a successful naval commander leading the Ottoman fleet. Yet, while drawing the map, he relied not only on his expertise in sailing. He created it by assembling and referring to 20 other regional maps, like the Arab map of India, four Portuguese maps, and the map of the western parts drawn by Columbus. Yes, the part he got from Columbus raised the heartbeat of many historians. Columbus drew a map during his third voyage to the New World and sent it to Spain in 1498. It's assumed to be lost. Surprisingly, historians can now understand what Columbus noted down by looking at Perry Reese's map. Fun fact, he also drew another world map in 1528. Even though only about one-sixth of this map has survived, it's clear that it described the northwestern part of the Atlantic, the region from Venezuela to Newfoundland, and the southern tip of Greenland. The map also showed Antarctica centuries before its discovery. Historians had to rethink the chronology of history after getting this crazy information. Perry Rees described Antarctica's topography without ice in great detail. In the 1930s, workers found dozens of stone spheres in Costa Rica. Locally, they're known as bolas de piedra, literally stone balls. They were made by a civilization lost in time. What's interesting about these balls is their shape. They are perfectly spherical. How ancient people could make such precise shapes is a mystery. The spheres are of different sizes. Imagine a small one, like a tennis ball. Then put another one next to it, 7 feet in diameter. The largest spheres weighed 16 tons. Archaeologists are sure that these balls are human-made. Yet their purpose remains unclear. Some archaeologists claim that the spheres could represent the solar system or could be inspired by various stages of the sun and the moon. Others say that the stone's placement refers to the houses of chiefs. Most of the stone spheres were sculpted from granodiorite. It's a hard rock similar to granite. Experts believe that ancient people used smaller rocks from the same material as tools to shape these spheres. They also think that sculptors probably heated portions of the stones and then cooled them rapidly. This could have helped them to remove the outer layers of rock. Our next one is an ancient battery set found in Iraq in 1936. The set consists of a ceramic pot, a copper cylinder, and an iron rod. At the top, the iron rod is isolated from the copper by asphalt, and both the rod and cylinder fit inside the mouth of the jar. The copper cylinder isn't watertight, so if the pot was filled with a liquid, it would surround the iron rod as well. Archaeologists focus more on the oxidized iron rod because the vessel just needed to be filled with an acid or alkaline substance to produce an electric charge. After examining this bizarre artifact, an Austrian archaeologist hypothesized that the instrument made use of chemical reactions to generate electrical energy. That's why they likened the instrument to a battery. An ancient civilization might have used it for some kind of electrotherapy. Yet there isn't any electroplated object known from this period. So Koenig's hypothesis was rejected by many archaeologists. But nobody has proven him wrong either. The origin and purpose of the vessel remain unclear to this day. So, want to see the world's oldest art studio? In 2011, archaeologists found 100,000-year-old shells in a South African cave. Those shells were used for paint-making. A coating of bright red powder on the inside of a pair of shells is the proof. Archaeologists say they found a complete kit used to produce a pigmented mixture. Now, in a different part of the cave, several paintings were displayed with little price tags on them intended for sale. Nah, just kidding. Although, that big one over there would look good over my couch. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.